Hello, my name is Tristan, and this is part five of my story. Um, I'm actually in the foyer of the psychological building here at UConn. Um, I just got out of my last therapy appointment for the semester. Um, let's see, I guess the next step is to talk about my relationships. Um, talk about where I've come from as far as my initial... Um, my initial, I guess, examples of what relationships were, what they, I, I presume that they were supposed to be. Um, I kind of detailed some of that about my parents' relationships. Um, I guess starting from the beginning, talking about my mother's parents and my father's parents would be the best place to start. I don't really know that much about my father's parents. Um, I do know, um, from what I remember, my father's father. Um, Grandpa Shaggy, as we used to call him, he was a very quiet person, very nervous person. He lived by himself for most of his life. Um, he and um, his my great grand or my grandmother, Grandma Shaggy, um, were divorced from each other. Um, she was very mentally unstable, kind of bounced around from home to home to home. Um, <clears throat> and she would escape, and she'd go back, and she'd be with her family again, and then she'd do something like maybe give them food poisoning or burn them or they'd show up to school with bruises and she'd be sent back. Um, Grandpa Shaggy lived by himself. Um, he did very little to help raise the children and he uh, lived in a very small apartment, I remember. Um, and I used to visit him. I used to spend time with him. Um, we used to take turns, each myself and my sister, sleeping over at his apartment. And um, the last time that I saw him, we were at a gas station and he told me to stay in the car and I got out and I walked across the, um, the gas station parking lot area from the pump to the actual gas station. Um, and I just remembered he completely freaked out. He was just petrified um, by what had just happened and, and uh, that was the last time that I saw him. He called my mother and had my mom come meet us to pick me up and he said that uh, he couldn't uh, look after us anymore. And I guess I had just just scared the crap out of him. Um, and that was kind of the relationship that I had with him. Um, the last time that I saw my great-grandmother, or my grandmother, I keep saying great-grandmother, Grandma Shaggy, um, uh, she was staying in a home and we went to visit her. And uh, we were brought there by my Aunt Pam and my Aunt Missy, um, both my father's sisters. And um, Missy, uh, has a large family. She was always very much the family-oriented person. Um, a lot of cousins by her. I don't. I don't really know any of them. I never had a relationship with any anybody on my father's side. Um, but Pam, Pam. She. Did, I remember her. Her constant commitment to her relationship with us was that she did not do the family thing, um, and that was kind of where we stood. And. It's, it was always really funny to me because my sister Megan is very much Pam, very stubborn, pig-headed, spoiled, uh, and Katie is very much Pam, aside from the fact that she does have a family, two amazing kids, um, Jerry and Charlie, um, Jerry named after uh, grandfather on her mother's side, um, and her husband, um, but very much in the same line of attitude, um, holds grudges like nobody's business is in fact involved in everybody's business and in fact it was Pam that told Katie that dad was getting married. Dad didn't let us any, any of us know that he was on his third marriage and Katie was very disappointed because she had been struggling very hard to try to find ways to make dad involved in his, uh, his grandchildren's lives but he made very clear that he had no interest in that. Um, so that was that, my father's side. Um, I know there was a, a, I've heard of a lot of alcohol abuse as far as uh, his father was concerned and certainly with the mental instability of his mother um, that makes him very complicated. I don't know anything about um, Grandma Shaggy's family um, from what we know she was adopted um, and as far as um, Grandma Shaggy's concerned um, I know back to when they came. They came in the 1880s um, from France. Um, Grandpa Shaggy's uncle I believe it was, 
uh, he used to actually work for the Vanderbilts. He actually maintained one of their estates in Massachusetts, and he was a horticulturalist, and he actually developed several different varieties of plants, white flowering plants, I guess, and he took care of their property as the, the lead um, uh, groundskeeper until he died, and it's actually mentioned uh, in the obituary that I found, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, Otherwise, I have no inter no uh, real interest in be having a relationship with any of them, and they certainly don't have any with me. I did contact my uncle Butch, which is, um, I think, Grandpa Shaggy's brother, and uh, he just sent a very nasty message to my mother, saying, "Oh, I'm not giving anybody money. Why are they contacting me? All you ever want is money." Blah 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 blah. And I just decided to leave it alone after that. Uh, I think the only claim to fame that we have, as far as the Chang side is concerned, uh, is that. Uncle Butch and his uncle were actually painted together by Norman Rockwell. The house that my father grew up in is next door to Norman Rockwell's home um, and what's now his museum. And there's an unpublished portrait of the two of them together that Uncle Butch has in his possession um, that he has refused to sell or, or allow to publish. So I have not had the luxury of seeing this portrait and it will probably never be seen by anybody knows with the type of person that Butch is, if anybody will ever really get to inherit it, he'll probably have it himself cremated and have the, the portrait burnt in his, with his ashes or some craziness like that. Um, as far as my mom's family is concerned, my grandmother, um, she comes from a very staunch, strict Roman Catholic, French Roman Catholic family. She wasn't allowed to speak English when she lived with her aunts. They took care of her. Um, she had to take care of her mother. Her mother was always very sick, and her father um, was, well, there is some kind of support, but she just grew up in uh, the type of environment where she had to pretty much just learn to take care of herself. And she didn't have a childhood, and I think that's where her resentment of me and certainly of my mother comes from. Um, she doted on my Uncle Bob. Um, he lived in their house in the basement until he was about 45 years old. So there was no question that uh, the boy was the one she was in love with. It was my mother who uh, had to deal with everything. And of course, she tried to force uh, you know, her, her beliefs religiously and otherwise on her. And it just didn't work out. My mother didn't do well in Catholic school. She had her remove her from the school. And, um, but Uncle Bob just maintained this. I mean, I look at pictures of Uncle Bob growing up, and he looked like he was a happy enough person, but just kind of trying to think of the best way to describe him, just just not there socially, and it's just definitely reflected in where he is now, and it, it makes me sad sometimes to look at him and uh, the way that my grandmother stunted his relationships and his development, and the way that my grandmother certainly uh, pressed my mother into finding her own uh, identity of self, which may have served her well in her college years, but after her marriage, or, uh, she was kind of... I, I'm, I'm going to say that she, she probably felt like she had to resolve, resolve herself to being um, a closed captive of her mother uh, as she had to come back with all of her children. Grandpa is a great guy, he has a great personality. I get most of my sense of humor, all of my sense of humor from Grandpa. Sarcasm out of the butt. Um, you know, if he'd, uh, if he'd pinch you or, or something like that jokingly and you'd say, ow, it hurts, he'd just kind of smile and say, you know, very, with a very serious face, oh, I don't, I didn't feel anything, that didn't hurt me at all, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and, uh, no, he was a very good guy, he is a very good guy, he's still very much alive. Um, I don't know, one of the most ironic things about my grandparents is my grandfather is being the very stoic person that he is, um, and my grandmother being such an emotional wreck and roller coaster. Uh, I find it almost ironic that my grandfather, while he has not really changed very much into his age, my grandmother has been forced to. Um, she suffers Alzheimer's. Um, it's been about four years since the diagnosis, and she's slowly getting to the point of where she doesn't really remember or recognize a lot of people. And unfortunately, one of the things that makes it the most difficult for me is because of the violent relationship that we have with each other. Um, I have a hard time dealing with the Alzheimer's because there's never going to be any closure. I'll never be able to ask her why she treated me that way. I'll never be able to ask her how she could look at me the way that she did and, and, and why the abuse was so necessary and, and why she spoiled Megan and, and abandoned me and, and all of these different things I'd like to ask. So what I did over the summer is I actually built a garden as a way of 
apologizing. I built her a place where she could go and escape to and pick all the flowers that she wanted to and save my mother from her picking weeds and bringing them in the house and setting off her allergies. But mostly so that she would have her own space and so that I could say, I'm sorry, because my grandmother always loved gardening and I used to dig up her gardens and transplant flowers into my own little gardens. And that was one thing that we could have always probably bonded on and I just was too busy fighting to actually do. Um, to do that with her, so that's what I've done. And as far as grandma's concerned, you know, mom lost her job. After 16 years with Sears, they told her, well, your position is no longer necessary. Have a nice life. And so she got her severance package and she works uh, at home, taking care of grandma and grandpa, and then also a company called Home Instead, where she helps take care of seniors. So that's good, that works for her. Um, but today's going to be a short video because um, I'm waiting to catch my van. And I will talk to all of you later. I'm kind of drinking what I've just said. And the next video is going to be a lot more serious. And it's going to be a lot harder for me to make. But thank you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.